All right, so is it still raining? Uh, I don't know. It was when I cruised out and got the licorice. So uh, we're going to hold off on Memcache until the next uh, deal. But Memcache is basically the Twitter example, and this is huge, right? And so that's totally awesome. You can see how to build Twitter. I just want to show it for people watching online. And manual auth and uh, come up in our level. And then I'm in uh, 66 and then 03. And no, that's not what I wanted. 02 and uh, 03. There we go. There's Twitter. And Twitter is go app serve. So it's got an app YAML. So here's Twitter. Nice. I'm a cowboy. I don't clean rooms. This is your nanny. Have you cleaned your room? You can log in, create an account, checks whether or not with Ajax and everything that username is taken. Uh, totally awesome. Once you're logged in, you can post. Takes you back home. So, Twitter. Many thanks to Caleb Doxy for teaching us how to do that. Uh, so, here's OAuth. And uh, there's a really nice README here. And um, this README explains OAuth. And then, you know, here's some docs on it. And then there's explanations for the GitHub example. And I haven't done OAuth for Twitter, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, VK. You guys know VK? Yeah. I did not know VK until this weekend. Come on. I was like, what the heck? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and then we have uh, Dropbox, right? So uh, Dropbox, uh, both Dropbox and GitHub are done. So you can check out how to do OAuth. But first, what is OAuth? So uh, OAuth is open authentication. And for instance, if I was going to do uh, like, you know, um, Golang for bridge, bridge form. I don't know if I spelled that right. Hopefully I'll get me there. There we go, go form. Ah, I'm logged in. So log out and uh, sign up. And I could sign up with Google. And then saying, hey, GoBridge Form wants to view your email address and view your basic profile info. Do I want to allow? And then I'm just signing in with Google. So you can see that, you know, uh, I could do it with Twitter, GitHub, Google. There's a bunch of different websites that do it. So I've included Twitter. Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, VK, Dropbox, GitHub, right? And uh, and so how does that work? How would you think? That's open authentication. And how many people are suspicious of that? Just like, well, that's kind of weird. Is it just me? Because like sometimes those requests, it's like they want to see your email address. They want to see your contacts. They want to see your contacts emails. They want to see all of your posts. It's like, wow, you're seeing a lot. What are you going to do with my contacts email addresses? Are you going to bug them? Right? And so sometimes that stuff is a little bit, but how many people are totally fine with let me just log in with GitHub? Yeah. 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 I never really uh, looked. Nobody ever really looks. They said, Google, okay, like, whatever. The Google, the Google one gives you like the permissions, the, or not the permissions, the things that it gives you a list of all of the things that the app is going to use. And like normally I don't see anything too weird. When I start seeing something like, Post on my behalf on Facebook or something like that. Yeah, it's like, no. You know. yeah. My name's Carson. I'm really loving this new website. Come check it out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's OAuth, right? And so how do we set it up? If you go look at GitHub, let me just close that one. And if we go look at GitHub, uh, OAuth, third party, third party OAuth. Then we come to here, these things, but OAuth GitHub API. So that'd be a good search to OAuth GitHub API, Facebook OAuth API, Dropbox OAuth API. Those would be the things you'd search for. And, uh, and this is only going to take two minutes. And you're going to like it. And then here's the, the documentation for doing it. The first thing you need to do is register your application. And so you register your application, sorry. Register your application. And that'll look something like this. And I'm going to delete this right after class in case you're watching this online. You think you're going to start hacking my GitHub account. You ain't. So these are like secret things right here. This is my client's secret. 
And then once I've, I've filled, gotten those things, I need to give it a name, give it a home page URL, give it an example, and then give it the callback where after I've sort of gone, sent them information, they send information back. Where does that come back to? Right? And so basically in the documentation, we're going to do two things. And the first one is we are going to ask for an authorization code. And so basically a user clicks that link on our website. And, uh, and then they get, when they click that and they say, okay, you could use GitHub to log in, that sends us an authorization code. We then exchange that authorization code for an access token, right? And when we ask for an access token, we're passing over the client secret. And that secret is that unique thing that we filled out right here and got. So that. So the first time I create a web page and I uh, ask the users, log in with GitHub. And when, and when they do that, they're going to go to URL at GitHub, and included in that URL is my client ID, so GitHub knows. GitHub knows. Oh, this is coming from Todd's website, because it's that client ID. And this, this client here at GitHub wants to log in there. So GitHub then says, okay, this client here, Todd, has given you permission, this client ID, and they send that information back to this spot, the callback. I then take that, and I send to GitHub this secret, along with the little token, right, the little client token, along with the authorization code, right, so I send the secret along with the authorization code, and I get back a token. I can then use that token to access all whatever information I've asked for from that user, right, so it's the first time, right, did that process kind of make sense? Do you need me to say it again? How many people need me to say it again? Okay, so I build a website. I put on there, log in with GitHub, right? A client clicks that link, they get taken to a GitHub, uh, they get taken to a GitHub uh, page. And the GitHub page they get taken to is uh, this one right here, right? So they get taken to that page and then GitHub takes over. And GitHub knows this is coming from me because I'm going to append to this, this Git, right? This Git request. I'm going to pin to it my client ID, right, which was this. So GitHub now knows, right, so that client ID, GitHub now knows, okay, Bob, who's already logged in at GitHub, so just came here from this person's website, right, this person's website, because that's associated with my client ID, and, uh, and, 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 that, and, and that, that website, right, is asking for these, uh, this scope, access to this stuff. And so GitHub will say, GitHub will say, uh, you know, do you want to, uh, do you want to give this, this web page access to your stuff? So we are just looking at Golang bridge forum, right? So let's just see that. Oh, I want this. And uh, sign up. And I could sign up with GitHub. That just went to GitHub. I'm already logged in in GitHub on this side. Let me sign out. Sign up for Twitter. Cool. That just went to Twitter, and uh, and Twitter saying, "Hey, will you sign in at Twitter, right? And uh, they want your access, right? Likewise, Google, right, is saying, "Hey, they want this access." Okay. And then I could say, "Okay, so that went to Google, along with some ID to identify me." And um, so I passed over that client ID, and then I say yes on Google's website, or Bob says yes on Google's website. So on GitHub's website, using GitHub, Bob says yes on GitHub. So GitHub sends back to me, to this, to this location right here, callback URL. GitHub sends back to me an authorization code. Okay, here's your authorization code. I then take that authorization code and I post HTTPS, right? So I'm sending this in the body, not in the URL, and I'm also uh, I'm also doing it HTTPS, so it's totally encrypted, right? And I'm including this time, I'm including this time the secret, so that that GitHub knows. This is actually coming from Todd, right? 
Because otherwise, somebody else might be able to just, you know, impersonate me. But I give him my secret. So it takes a second. The secret. You say you're giving him the secret. This secret right you're here. You're not sending the secret. Or... No, I'm giving him this secret right here back to GitHub. So it goes, the, I build a website with a button that says log in with GitHub. A user views that page, clicks the link, takes them to GitHub. GitHub identifies which web page it's from. How does GitHub identify which web page it's from? Because what link does it take him to? It takes him to this link right here, and it includes the client ID. So GitHub now knows, OK, it's coming from this website. And it also includes the scope, the permissions I'm asking for. It asks you then, the, it asks Bob, do you want to give this website these permissions? Just like right here, right? Do you want to give? this website these permissions and I say okay right and then so I say okay so github sends back to me at this place this callback URL github sends back to me an authorization code great I've got an authorization code okay and uh, What would prevent, and so the hack here is a cross-site request forgery. And so you got to be careful, like, uh, how do we present, prevent a cross-site request for forgery? And so this is kind of why there's this, these steps in here. And so cross-site request forgery would be like, you're already logged in at Bank of America. And I create a form at some other website. And that form at this other website knows what Bank of America wants. You fill it out thinking you're getting a free t-shirt with kittens on it. And it, it asks for the information that I need. And then I submit that to Bank of America's website. right? And it looks like it's coming from you because you're logged in on your computer. And then it transfers money. I know it's kind of... I'm confused because... I could see that. You're on one GitHub account and you're asking for authorization from another GitHub account? No, I just have I some. Google? I have some. I have some website. So I've I've mixed a couple of different. I'm showing the Google example. So I build a web page. I have a button. Log in with GitHub. When somebody clicks that button, they go to. They go to this URL, and I append to that URL my client ID. So GitHub now knows this is coming from Todd's website, right, or from this website. And GitHub then asks the user who clicked the button on my website, do you want to log in to Todd's website with GitHub and give him these permissions? You say yes. So GitHub sends back to me at this location uh, an authorization code. I take that authorization code and then send it back to GitHub along with my secret, right? I take that authorization code and I send it back to GitHub along with my secret and I send it to this place right here along with my secret right and then GitHub says okay Bob has granted you permission to look at his stuff right and uh, and they then send back to me an access token which allows me to access your stuff so first an authorization code comes back to me. I send that authorization code back to GitHub with my client secret, my secret, and they send me an access token which lets me look at your stuff. Did that make a little bit more sense? So here, here's the example, right? And like here is this right here. Let me just copy that. So if I build this URL, right? If I take this URL, I'm just going to ask right here for the authorization code for a user. And if I build this URL and I append client ID to it, so let's just do that. Let's just build it. So first of all, I need to go into GitHub and eliminate my authorizations because um, your profile settings, I don't know where it is, settings, and applications. And so GoBridge Forum, GitHub, so nothing's in there. Cool. All right, so I'm going to grab this from the documentation, grab this URL. It's going to be a GET request, which means it just goes through the web, and URLs are all up here. And I'm going to append to it, so question marks are any variables that you want to include in your GET request. right? So I'm going to append to it 
and it wants a client ID. So I'm going to do client ID. Client ID is equal to client ID and and it wants the callback redirect URI. Redirect URI is equal to and it wants my redirect URI right here. Right? And, uh, and then I could also, if I wanted to, put in scope, what permissions am I asking for, and state, which is just a random string. And we'll see that in a second if we keep looking at it. And so now, when I do this, whoa, cool. All right, and then I could authorize that application. And so nothing's there at that, that callback URL. I didn't ask, you know, because we went to localhost 8080 OAuth 2 callback, and we got a code. So I need to catch that as the website. I need to catch that code, and that's my uh, authorization code. And then I need to ask for a token, and then when I get that token back, I can then access Todd's stuff that I've asked to access, right? And so here, here is. Um, uh, that and then I forget what I was going to say, but yeah, so that's basically the process. That's kind of cool, right? Oh, I can now go look at my uh, I could go look at my authorizations, refresh this, and now I've authorized this app right here, right? And I could revoke that. It's kind of cool. So that's basically it, and uh, here's the code. And I built it up in a lot of steps. So just get the authorization code, get the access token. Uh, use parse query to pull out some of the data, right? Uh, get the user email, and this isn't working yet. And then also, uh, and then here's the complete version. So pretty cool. We're checking out. Anyhow, that's uh, that's OAuth with GitHub. Questions? Did it become a little bit more clear? Cool.